Okay. Let no corrupt word. Let me read the New Living Translation. I don't, I'm beginning to get into the New Living Translation, although it's not one of the best translations because most of the time they omit a lot of verses. So don't get too caught up with it sometimes. But sometimes it just brings out the, 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 the 21st or 19th century, 18, um, 20th century English. Don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful. <laughs> so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. You know, I gave an encouragement first. and uh, <laughs> Let everything you say be good and helpful uh, so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. Go on. And do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Remember, he has identified you as his own guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. Next verse. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be what? Be kind to what? Each other. Tender-hearted, Forgiving one another, just as God, through Christ, has forgiven you. Instead, be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God, through Christ, has forgiven you. Right. I'm going to talk this morning as quickly as I can on a topic called, which applies to everybody, because one of the things that I've learned in life is that there are certain things that you learn that are not applicable to you now. And then 10 years down the line, you remember those things, you apply them. One of the things about knowledge is knowledge needs to be stored up. Hello? And I don't want to be, no, 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 let me not be, be, I'm not going to be insulting or something, but I found that, that people no more read. There are particular races in the world that don't read. Hence, they don't store up knowledge. And so when issues come, they make loads of mistake because what you could have dealt with was in a book. But we don't read and uh, sadly enough, even Christians are supposed to be even reading the Bible. We don't read the Bible, not to talk of other, other information that you need to glean from. You're supposed to have a very panoramic view of reading. You're supposed to have a vast of reading. You're supposed to be able to read both spiritual and 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 and. and unspiritual, and when I mean unspiritual, I'm talking of decent things. You're supposed to know the finance. You're supposed to know things. You're supposed to, you're supposed to have a library. Many people get to their house, they don't have a library. You're supposed to have a library. You're supposed to have a plethora of, of books that you can, you're supposed to be investigative. You're supposed to be inquisitive. Not because you need, many people when it comes to certain things, but many times I, I need certain things and um, um, probably last week or something like that, I was, I was writing a, a, a paper and I said, man, there's this book, um, um, Healing Through the Centuries. And I, and I phoned my brother, I said, do you have my book, Healing Through the Centuries? He said, no, he doesn't have it. I said, are you sure? Check in your library. He said he would check in his library if he had. And then I, I called him and I said, I'm looking for this book, Healing Through the Century. And then we searched and searched and searched and searched and searched. And, searched. and then, bam, he said, what color is it? I said, I think he had a blue cover, but apparently it was a green cover or something like that. Anyway, we, he, we found it and we got it and bam, it was my solution. Now, I've never used that book before, but when I needed it, I bought that book probably about eight years ago. Never used it, but when I needed it, because there was knowledge stored up, I bought it to store knowledge up, I was able to access it. Do you understand what I'm saying? And, 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 and fortunately for us, even if you don't acquire the physical books, the, the internet is a vast, as bad as the internet is, it's very, very good. 
It's a vast internet of things. I've done so much repairing. We, uh, I remember my, my our cooker broke down one time like that, and um, Pastor D's eyes was already flickering as if, hey, a new one is coming. Forget it. No, 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 no. No, no, no. But this thing, bro, it's not working. The oven is not working. Not working means a new one. She was already mm, checking the internet. And just as I was about to click buy a new one, all of a sudden something came upon me. The Holy Ghost. From on I came upon me. Hallelujah. While she was waiting for me to click the button, I just clicked another button and I just went on the fan. Oh, it's the fan not working. Really? Which fan? Checked it, checked it. Well, it went downstairs at like probably to one in the midnight and started taking my oven apart. Found the fan, ordered it, fixed it all by myself. Bob's your uncle, start walking, save myself 800 pounds, new oven, invariably. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, and how much did it cost me? 22 pounds. So I saved, so instead of spending 800 and something pounds, I spent 22 pounds because I sought knowledge. So what has been damaged can be fixed if we pursue knowledge. Sadly enough, sometimes we think we have all the knowledge and we destroy ourselves because sometimes we think we know everything. And let me tell you something. If you forget anything, write it down, take it down, tweet it, do everything. The day you stop learning is the day you start dying. The day you stop learning is the day you start dying. And sadly, sadly enough, we need to understand and realize that we can learn from anything. Amen? Amen? And so that brings me into the series of issues that we're going to be talking about this week. Wedlock or deadlock. I'm talking on a topic today called tune up your marriage. Now, it applies to everyone, whether you're married yet or not, whether you're going to get married later or not, whether you're divorced and you say you're never going to be married, but you can become a counselor, you can become somebody that can advise someone, or whether you're going to be married, get married again or not. One of the things I found out is that we do not tune up our marriage. The statistics of divorce at the moment in the Christian fraternity is 33%, one out of every three marriages end up in divorce. Statistically, empirical studies made by, by, by other institutions has found out that amongst the evangelicals, not even the, the nominal, because the evangelical Christians, we are hitting the same rate of divorce as those that are in the world. That's, that's, that's shameful. And one, and one of the studies said, I mean, even though the study says that there are certain factors that also are not investigated into um, um, uh, because the fact of the matter is that Christians um, marry early because they, of the sanctity of marriage and they don't want to mess themselves up so they marry, marry early or stuff like that. But one of the key things that came out in the study is that people stop learning. They stop seeking counseling. They think, especially Christians, we speak, we speak in tongues too much. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not saying we shouldn't speak in tongues. That's not what I'm saying. But we speak, we, so, so we don't, we're not real. So we, we, we stay so much in the ecclesiastical level, celestially inclined and terrestrially unprofitable. We're not real. Where so much spirituality has also bring, brought in the spirit of pride. How can someone like me who speaks in tongues and fire is coming down? Someone like me that well, when I tell everybody to stand up and all things are breaking loose, how can I say that I have issues in my marriage? So spirituality has brought in a spirit of pride that has took, taken us down the road, a, a, a steep decline in the institution of marriage. The institution of marriage is not a day's journey. Did I hear an amen? amen. Watch what I wrote. 
Marriage is a stage-by-stage -stage process in a world that does not embrace the attitude or the propensity of process. We want automatic, quick fix, fast food kind of marriage where everything must be in place, everything must turn out good, everything must be perfect, all the children should be well behaved, the dog should be well groomed, the cat should be chasing away danger, and the fish should not be dying in the aquarium. It is this unrealistic expectation that causes problems in marriage because we all reject or avoid the process that leads to success in marriage. Process. The totality of a successful marriage is built on process. You know, some people here are not going to like what I'm about to talk. This week we're starting, there's no service on Wednesday, we're starting on Thursday, Friday, Thursday, we've started together. I know if you are sitting beside your wife, some of you have crossed your hands already, some of you are hands on legs, some of you are, he's talking about you. No, whenever you are pointing the finger, the Bible says remove the log from your own eyes before, before you move the speck from your brother. So listen, process takes time. It, process is dependent on the participants. It is dependent on procedures. And procedures rely on time. Time also is unpredictable. Let me read that again. Process. Marriage is a process. It's not a quick fix. It's not a drive-through, burger, ordering. Marriage. Hello. It's waiting. It's a time issue. It is by procedures. Pro process takes time. It, the, to, how long does it take? It depends on the participants. What does the participant depend on? Procedures. And procedures rely on time. Time, time is unpredictable. It is immeasurable. It, when it comes to marriage, it will require patience and expectation. Watch this. Patience and expectation. What did I say? And what? But watch this. In the midst of failure. Patience and expectation. In the midst of failure, pressure, and temptation. Process works both ways. It can be the process of a future together or it can be the process of growing apart. Every marriage has problems. From the beginning of the honeymoon all along to the way, partners struggle with their weaknesses, their differences, with the crisis their life brings their way. Every marriage sees conflict. Every ma the first marriage saw conflict. I know as I'm saying that, I say, ah, hmm, my marriage doesn't, my marriage, in fact, there's nothing wrong in my marriage. <laughs> For the mere fact that you're saying that is because the person is doing everything you want. Until the day they decide not to do everything you want. She says, ah, my wife is absolutely perfect. It's because you are a bully. Yes. And ladies, before you dance, you know I will always bring a balance to this thing. So bring in the balance yourself so that I can move on. It's, it's not... The first ordained marriage... At least in our marriage, we waited for long, went through the bush, hunted, found the lady, cajoled, toasted, or do all kinds of languages that you use. But the first marriage had no problem. He just woke up and saw a woman. That no choice, no, no problem, no hunting. Just woke up and said, ah, woman, hallelujah. And they had conflicts. They had issues. My marriage was made in heaven. That's why the devil will attack it. 
Because even when God was in heaven, Satan. Hello, somebody. Oh, my marriage was made in hell. No, those who are made in heaven, the Bible says, and there was war in heaven. Not on earth, in heaven. There was war in heaven. So you have become so spiritual, so celestially inclined that you say, it can't happen to me. There was war in heaven. And God had to cast out the devil himself. And even though God casted out the devil, it doesn't mean the devil wasn't visiting heaven once a while. Ah, pastor, that is theologically wrong. Oh, the Bible says that when God gathered and the sons of God were together, that Satan came and Jesus and God said, where are you coming from? He said, my ministry hasn't changed, going to and fro from all the earth. Look at that. Yeah. In your journey, have you not said, well, how did he come to visit God? The Bible says, and the devil came to tempt Jesus. First tempt him, second tempt him, and then the Bible says, and then in conclusion, after Jesus defeated the devil, and the devil departed for a while. So tune up. Hello? Every marriage has shared more pain than anyone outside knows. Every marriage is a journey of hills and valleys, highs and lows. Although all marriages have troubles, you can tweet this again because I know how much you tweet. Although all marriages have troubles, not all marriages are in trouble. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyone who has been in stable marriage for more than a few years will know that relationship has to be worked out. And thank God in this church, you will be hearing the announcement, we will be celebrating people's 25th wedding anniversary and 50 years wedding anniversary. And we are going to celebrate it just to make sure that God has come to all of us. Amen. To make sure that it can happen. Yeah. That there are human beings who have been married for 25 years and 50 years. Human beings, practical, human, physical being, man and woman. Hello. My sermon is for a man and woman. Let me make this clear. Hello, I am not an expert in man and man and woman and woman. So those kind of people, I can pray for you. I can go to those. Who, as far as I'm concerned, when I'm talking about marriage, there is no distortion in my thinking, no postmodernism. Hallelujah. My own agreement on marriage, as far as I'm concerned, until I go to heaven and Jesus sends me back with another definition, is between a man and a woman. Let me make that clear. I have nothing against you. But the institution and the seminar I'm running from today, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, is between a man and a woman. If you want me to run a seminar between a man and a man, and a man you really don't want to attend that seminar. <laughs> because we will talk a lot. I will talk. Say, Pastor, feel free. But as far as I'm concerned, my stance today, when I'm talking about this, is I am taking my cue from the first institution of marriage that showed Adam and Eve. Hello? Amen? Are we clear? It's not an homophobic attack. It's my belief and what I am teaching about from here. If you have another teaching, then you can rent a hall and that's not a problem. It's, I don't have that. I don't have it, but what I'm talking about is this. If, if someone has an issues with that, you can see me in privately. We talk counseling. I don't have anything. Hallelujah. I counsel gay people. I do. Pray for them. I don't have it. Talk with them. And if they ask me an opinion, I will tell them to put all their mobile phones outside. There's no recording. So let's talk then. Uh -huh. so I'm telling you, I have no idea, so I don't have a problem. But what I'm talking about now is anyone who has been in a stable marriage between a man and a woman for a few years 
we know that a relationship has to be worked out. It has taken more, it has taken more than romantic feelings to keep them together. It has taken a daily choice on some occasions having to talk through sensitive issues on others having to control an attraction to another man or woman. Couples who are who get married thinking that the line in their vows for better or for worse will not really apply to them are in for a shock. Today, I just want to kick off about going back to basics. I hope I have the time. Because sometimes we try to complicate an uncomplicated institution. Marriage is as complicated as you make it. It has become so complicated that we now seek out different witty inventions than remembering to do the little things. The secret to closeness in marriage isn't necessarily sparkling conversations or shared interest or even incredible SE and put the remaining at the back of it. I'll talk about that better on Thursday. As good as those are, the secret of intimacy is plain old-fashioned kindness. Tap your husband and say, did you hear that? Plain, old-fashioned kindness. You know, those stuff that we learned in kindergarten, like thoughtfulness, courtesy, and caring. If you want your marriage to be tuned up, then you better listen up now. Because the plain, simple ones are number one. Never underestimate the power of touch. Sometimes it's like a no-brainer. You'll be surprised. We can go days or weeks without touching each other. Yet, a hug works wonders. Physical affection is a powerful communicator in marital love. One writer puts it like this. Listen to this. He says, to touch my body is to touch me. To withdraw from my body is to distance yourself from me emotionally. Now, men, I'm not saying the touch that you're thinking about. Just the touch. The holding of hands. Because I, I know, men, you've gone there. That's not what I'm talking about. So you get home and say, did pastor not say touch? No, no. You see... The holding of hands, the jiving. Some, some, some couples, I see them cross the road sometimes. They are crossing the road. It's a dangerous road. They can't even hold their hands to cross the road. There's no touch. The passing by, the brushing against the body, the pinching of the bomb, those things are touching. Not hard. The back massage, the arm around the waist, the kiss, the touching. And I know you're thinking, Pastor, you're crazy. That's why you have a crazy marriage. Become crazy with me and all of us will be crazy together and then marriage will stay crazy for 40 years, 50 years. We'll begin to celebrate. Yeah. You see, because we've complicated marriage. It's uncomplicated. It's just because we just don't want to go back to the basics. Look at basics number two. Forget the grandiose gestures. You'll be, one, you'll be surprised. When you routinely build little kindness into your marriage, they become a source of strength for later. Ha, hallelujah. Like money in the bank. So, so think, so, 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 like, like little kindness, like helping to clean up, making the coffee. No, no, no. What? I mean, some men, the lady would leave home to go and do one or two things, one or two things, one or two things for two or three hours or something like that. You are home sitting watching TV and the dishes are full of what, what, what are you doing? Oh, no, I'm for, for, do, and she, excuse me, she's going to come home to clean. She's going to come home to cook. Now, a, lo a woman who appreciates something will want to come home and find the sink empty so I can do some work.
but you are crossing your legs, sitting down, watching. No, you can watch that. That one you can watch. Just to make sure that before the match starts, you've done it. I knew the kickoff was 5 o'clock yesterday. There are so many things I've done way before 5 o'clock. So that at 5 o'clock, Pastor D will not come. When I'm sitting there, she won't say lazy bugger. Because I've done all the stuff. Got out of so this is my own time. Hello? There are certain things you can buy. Hello? You, 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 you come on. You do something. It's those little kindness. That are, it's not the grandest just to say on a bad day, which is the only time you remember. If you remember, then you now bring. That's not what it is. the little kindness. The kind, uh, some, sometimes the bin, is, the bin is so full, you're still waiting for her to carry the bin out. The bin carrying out is not a woman's job. Hello, somebody. Hi, amen. The bulb has been blown for the past four weeks. You're still waiting for her to do the job. There are some jobs in the house that are not a woman's job. And women accept that there are some jobs in the house that are men's job. Men and women are equal. No, we're not. We have different strengths. This is the problem of the 21st century. We can have the same intellectual, but there are certain things that if we are the same, why are they debating now whether women should be in front line or not? We shouldn't be debating that. Just go front line. Hello? Yeah. But here's the problem. Here's the problem. I would really doubt, doubt, if a woman would see a child in the front line who's about to do something and who's a mother and want to shoot the child. That their maternal instinct will not kick in. But if they pass the law, I agree with every law they pass. I would say subject to all laws. But I can understand from where the point but a man, a man can detach emotionally. Hello, somebody. Giving presence is fundamental expression of love that transcends all cultural barriers. They are visual symbols which have powerful emotional value. Oh, God, I mean, some, some, some guys annoy me. I like to slap them black and blue. Valentine's Day, you didn't send flowers. I don't believe in flowers. No, I didn't have money. You poor rat. You didn't have money. What do you mean you didn't have money? Did you not know that Valentine's was coming? You didn't even buy a card. You didn't even send some flowers. You didn't even do anything. And on a bad day also, same complaint, I didn't have money. It means that spiritually you are sick. You need to be delivered. Hello? Forget bad days, forget Valentine's Day, nothing, nothing. You, you've, even, you've even transferred your selfishness even to, to, to other people around you. You can't remember to call your dad on their bad day, call your mom on their bad day, even the children. These are grandiose gestures that begins to say and point and indicate that I love you. Hmm. Mm -hmm. giving presence let me say that again is a fundamental expression of love that transcends all cultural barriers any culture you give presence the bible says a gift of a man shall make way before him that's not the gift of the holy spirit it's not signs and wonders the gift of a man he said when a man gives a gift he will make way for him if you give a gift to your wife he will make way And bring you before great men, great kings. There are kings inside your wife and your husband. It's both ways. Just I don't know why I'm dealing with the guys today. But it's both ways. Number three, remember your manners. Now I'm not going to these deep, high, fallopian, weary things. It's the basic things that we've forgotten. Remember your manners. I've seen men, a man and a woman, you are going through a door. The dude just walks in first. The dude. And he doesn't even walk well. (laughs) 
opens the door and leaves the door behind and just moves on. The dude, sometimes I want to even... They're going up an escalator. You are going first. That's why your eyes are blind. How would I go first? I want my wife to go first so that I can... Oh, Jesus. Lord, help me today. Hallelujah. How can you go up first? You go up, you are going first, and then you are looking at iniquity. But if your wife has gone before you, then what you are beholding is the glory of the Lord Almighty. It's amazing certain things. This is just little manners that we've forgotten. Some straightforward manners. Mr. Pastor, what are you doing? Let's talk about fasting and praying. That's the one that can send out the devil. The devil would, there are certain things that would, the devil would just flee from your house when certain things are in place without fasting and praying. Remember your manners. The Bible says, Paul said, be kind to each other. That means listening without interpretation, without interp- interrupting. Practice the basic things like please, thank you, the guy, will, the woman will cook the food and bring it towards you and you will just grab the knife and fork. In fact, you will always say, ah, there's no knife and fork there. <laughs> no thank you. No appreciation. Hello, somebody. And even the guy comes in one day and brings flowers and you're asking that, what have you done wrong? <laughs> you don't have to understand. They book somewhere to go. Just call you and say, you know what? When I get home, I'm just taking you out. Uh, uh, you should have given me three days, four days notice. <laughs> Some things are so crazy that it annoys me. When you are caught in, if he just picks you up and doesn't tell you and takes you somewhere, say, oh, you love me so much because you are now married and you have five children. Does that mean you should stop doing surprises? Or you should have given me four notes, five days notice. Because the children have this one. The, 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 the guy is not a dunce. He must have planned for the children. Must have seen that certain things are done. But when you don't appreciate that, then he will be scared to make another move. It's these little things that are causing problems. The little foxes that spoil the vine. There are no stones here. You can't stone me. You know that I'm saying the truth. Remember your manners. Practice, please. Things like thank you. Things like, I'm sorry, which is really not in the dictionary of the Christian fraternity. I'm sorry. No, I'm always right. No, I'm sorry. No, nah, sorry. Sorry seems to be a far language. In fact, it seems to be, a, he's turning to becoming a devil's language. I'm sorry. You really hear that in marriage today? I'm sorry. No, everybody would prefer to go on on a mood for 15 days, 30 days, just because somebody doesn't have the spirit of God in their intellectuals to say, I'm sorry, let's bring peace because somebody is always right and I always say this why don't you give up your right to be right yeah. I can tweet that again <laughs> in marriage why don't you give up your right to be right one wise man told me that hello somebody this stuff is in rocket science and it works Number four, compliments are key. Pastor, when are you going to get into reading the scripture? I'm not. Compliments are key. The scripture we've read, be kind towards each other. What is that? Compliments. Compliments. Remember, whenever you think something nice about your mate, tell them. Huh? We live in a cold, competitive world, and hearing we're loved, we're smart, we're attractive, and fun from someone whose opinion we really value means everything. Compliments brings power. The Bible says that life and death lies in the power of the tongue. Compliments brings power. If children are told that they are useless in maths, they are likely to be to do very badly in this subject. If they are told they have creative writing abilities, then they are likely to become aspiring novelists. 
Spouses will live up to the expectation they are given. We need to build our husband or wife up, both in public and in private, and avoid putting each other down. The marriage vow says we will cherish one another, isn't that? Cherish means to compliment. Some men, the wife left home, came back with a new hairdo you didn't recognize. <laughs> and then you were driving, you got to a particular place, probably a particular party, and they came down, and one guy said, Wow! Your wife's hair is looking good. And your foolishness is shown to all the world. You didn't even know, you didn't recognize. No compliment. You didn't know. I was telling someone, I said, Some people, God forbid, if their wife is knocked down for, by a car and they want to, uh, to, to say they want to identify that, please, uh, we're calling, is it your wife? What, what clothes did she wear this morning? Yeah. What shoe did she put on? Did, what hair do does she? I was praying. <laughs> <laughs> is her nails just ordinary or is it painted? Mm, I was still praying. They, they, can't, they can't identify. I'm telling you. Nothing. Should I go on or should I just... Oh, okay. Compliment. When they do so, compliment them. Because compliment brings power. I know you can do it. Well done. Even when they fail, still find a compliment in the failure that can say, I will do it again. And that goes not only to our wives, it goes also to our family, to our children. Oh, wait, hey, hey, why did you come here? Didn't you see your or, or, or other siblings? Don't, don't, come, don't compare. You might be setting yourself up for failure. They might not be as intelligent as their siblings, but can be more industrious. Don't set yourself up for a fail. You will later regret it. I know what I'm saying. I'm a living testimony. So be, be very aware, be very aware. Encourage everybody to the ability that they possess and encourage that ability because you never know. Wow, well, my time is running. Which number five? Number five. I have like about eight commandments, so let me see how far I go. Admit when you are wrong. You see? Very simple thing. Admit, admit when you are wrong. I am sorry seems to become one of the most difficult phrases to say in a relationship. If your wife is sitting next to you, tap them. Both of you, you know, I'm, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry means to, seems to become one of the most difficult phrases to say in a relationship. It is becoming so extinct that it is bordering on the edge of collapse. Why are you looking at me sanctimoniously? Am I not saying the truth? Everybody's now acting as if, see? We're not in Hollywood, we're in church. The reason behind it is pride and ego. Yes. A lack to accept fault and apologize for it is ruining a lot of marriages today. I'm sorry. And there's a difference between I'm sorry and I'm sorry. Hello? Hello? Okay, I'm sorry. You're yeah, not sorry. That's not sorry. <laughs> Just, I'm sorry. No, do you see? I'm sorry also comes in all shapes, form, and manner. Okay? Hello? Can I give you one example? Oh, but honey, I thought that you would take out the bean. I'm sorry. Then go and take out the bean. <laughs> that is true. I'm sorry. Isn't it, Elandro? That's I'm sorry. Hello? Hello? Action with words. No, I, I'm sorry. And then the next thing you say, uh, you know what? Um, I needed to go and visit my friend. Eh, 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 eh. Stay, take the heat, honey. And let it cool down. Amen? It's becoming a word that is extinct. Sadly enough, it's going down a slide that is seriously damaging a lot of relationships. Number six. I'm rushing through this. Pray for each other daily. Yes. 
Yes, I was going to say, Pastor, now you've got to the point. You will be shocked how many people never pray for their spouses daily. You will be shocked. Should I take a poll now? Yes. Let me not spoil myself. Because even said, yes, you might have prayed for her today and she did forgot to pray. I'm telling you. I'm, I'm telling you. Be sincere. How it pray as simple as that is, we forget to pray for our wives or husbands. I'm telling you, daily, five minutes prayer, two minutes prayer. Father, thank you for, 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 for sweet, because I can't say Pastor D when I'm praying or else I'll be acting like as if I'm, Pastor, thank you for sweet, thank you for my wife in the name of Jesus. Bless her, bless her in the name of Jesus. Help her, Lord. Bless her. Let the Holy Spirit come upon her. Let her keep on being beautiful to me and me only. <laughs> let, her, let her leg be healed so she can go back wearing her, her, her shoes that I've invested in, Lord Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so that I can also be delivered from the kitchen so she can resume her job <laughs> early. You'll be shocked. When I prayed, healing came quickly. And the chair that I used to sit that was becoming vacant and vacant, I possessed back. <laughs> you do you okay down there? You see, sit fish are flying today. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because the fumes of the food were affecting my intellect. <laughs> After some time, when she was sick, the fumes were just affecting my intellect. I was just disorientated. I just sometimes they were asking questions. I don't know where I am. <laughs> I learned to pray daily. You will be shocked. You will be shocked. Why? You see, you see, it is amazing how we can pray for so many other things that are irrelevant and don't bother to pray for each other. If we want to tune up our marriage, then we need to pray each other up. Take at least five minutes to pray for your spouse and see the difference it makes in your relationship. If you don't pray for each other, you will pray on each other. You can tweet that. <laughs> if you don't pray for each other, you will P-R-E-Y on each other. Number seven. Try to look your best. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Ah. It is, um, it is amazing how efforts begin to slide once the ring is on the hand. The guy stops looking good. The girl stops dressing up. Dressing smart, looking good, smelling good, and appearing good does not need to disappear for good. Let me read that again for the tweeters. Dressing smart. Looking good, smelling good, and appearing good does not need to disappear for good. When you look good, you stay attractive. Why would I look at a Mercedes Benz when I have a Ferrari on the driveway? But beware, the Ferrari must stay good. If Jesus' garments was the contention to cast lots for, then ensure that to the best of your ability, within budgetary limits, you stay good. Also compliment your spouse when they make the effort before someone does it on your behalf and steals your merchandise. A particular lady was having a problem with his with, with their husband. You know, I've spoken to you, I've dealt with guys, 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 so ladies don't be offended. Because marriage is very difficult to preach nowadays. A particular lady was having issues, major issues with her husband. Her husband doesn't look at me, her husband doesn't do this, her husband looks at other people and walk, all kinds of stuff, all kinds of stuff. So my brother was telling me, I said, next time you travel, make sure that you visit this lady at three in the afternoon three times during the week. My brother instantly hit it. He knew what I was saying. When first time, 
she was in pajamas. When second time, she was in pajamas. When third time, just before the husband came back, she was still in pajamas. And now he said that. He looked at the lady and said, can you see your fool, foolishness? So the guy comes back from work. After seeing all the dressed up, smart up, dangling hair, all kinds of stuff, with all kinds of movement at work, and then comes home to a sorry sight every day. Are you blaming him? What are you doing? Ladies, don't hit me. You know I'm saying the truth. I'm trying to deliver you. And in your heart, if you're saying, he's always, that's where your problem is. I'm here to deliver you. He said, the, lady, the man was not that good. He said, can you see? Look, 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 at, look at you. Even I can look at you. And I'm a man. I'm supposed to look at him. Wow! But after he's looked at everything, then he comes back home to a sorry sight. Hello? Guys, when you used to pick up the ladies, you coordinate. <laughs> smell nice wherever you steal the perfume or the cologne from at least you steal to make it look good now that you're married you're not even bothered you're just wasting away looking sitting down there you can't even walk up the flight of stairs with her before you start Before your hair was in shape, your, your shirt was ironed. Now you just pick up anything from anywhere. You used to go and see the hygienist once a month or twice a month. Now all kinds of things are in the <laughs> orifices of your teeth. Your mustache is looking ugly. Your fingernails are all dirty, filled with all kinds of things. And your, your feet are smelling. I'm done, I'm done. I think I I I don't know what else to say, you know? It's those, it's the little things. It's the little things. I'll take the last one probably on Thursday or somebody else. It's a little, give, give me up those little things again. That applies whether you're married, whether you're planning to get married. Whether this applies, it's the same thing. Never in this, and underestimate the power of touch. You know, but when, I'm, when I met Pastor, Pastor D, Pastor D was was holy, ah, holy to an embarrassment. I couldn't, I couldn't, if I hold her, ah, she was too holy. Come on. I had to unholy nice her. Ha, ah, ah, my Jesus Christ. Yes, now people like Pastor D, Elder Kemi, they are so holy, Elder Bobby is believable man, ah, holy to, the host, we had to walk to touch, hold hands. We are ah, I do some embarrassing stuff, all kinds of stinky side, public, and just uh, till the till till Jesus came. <laughs> Those touches are important, but as marriage goes on, the children comes, we forget them. When last did you kiss your wife, husband? You think about it, you will be shocked. Grandiose gestures are not the issues, the little ones, your manners, your compliments. Admit when you are wrong. Pray for each other daily. Try to look your best. The last one is having mentors, but I'll talk about that later. You're every married, you need a mentor. Somebody you can bounce off with. Not your father, not your mother, not your best friend. Someone who's gone before you. Who can, and not just any mentor, not over spiritual mentors who will say, hey, my friend. <laughs> We've done it. <laughs> my friend, go back home and relax, my friend. <laughs> if I, where you are going home, branch at Tesco and buy some flowers. 
my friend. Right, you will suffer. You will be in Iceland in the cold for a very long time. Friend, mentors, mentors who you can bounce off with. When the children come, it's a different thing. We'll deal with that. We'll deal with that on Friday. Children, we do everybody come. Make sure you come. Thursday, don't miss these things because we're going to be real. And then um, we expect the Adiban um, to, to come on. Saturday, Saturday. There, there are certain things we'll show you on Friday about children. You'll be shocked. I used to think that the children are children. I used to remember my mentors uh, when they are teenagers, it's different, but they were teenagers, and they're going, uh, go, 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 go. I have three children, teenagers now. I wish they were back to two, three, four. <laughs> At least I can tell them to go out with have these teenagers. Go to bed. Which bed? hear some whisperings at some other hours. Open the door! Nothing. You think, is, is there a witch playing on me or something like that? You close the door. You, say, you open the door again. Nothing. Huh? Me, I'll just go and say, well, Pastor D, the investigator. Move closer. Pull off the door. <laughs> I know you are. <laughs> Going to school, mom, bye, mom, dad, bye, dad, dad, dad bye. Mom, bye, hey, come back here, come back here. If I open that bag, would there be righteousness in it? <laughs> Me, I would just say bye. It's a different ball game entirely. Father, help us. So, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we'll have some great time. Make a sacrifice, make his knowledge, knowledge. You might not apply. We've opened Thursday up for everybody, open Friday up for everybody. Saturday, Couples married, who are married, men, a man and a woman, come. We'll have lunch. We'll talk. Uh, lots of things that will, that will be going on. Please pay. If you are engaged, you can come. Uh, so you are invited because you will gain knowledge. Amen. All right. Let's give the Lord a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Lost for Christ.